Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and my bottom five least favourite horror movies of 2017. Now this is the kind of second part of a two-part video that I've done along with Lee aka Drum Dums and Cody Leach. I've done my top 10 horror of the year, uh, go and check out that video, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but this is my bottom five, so for, for my money the worst horror films that I've seen so far this year. Let's start with my number five choice and work up to my worst. Number five for me is The Mummy. Uh, yeah, this, this, the reason really I think this is not particularly great, and don't get me wrong, this isn't really that bad of a film. It's got some entertaining moments, but it's ju it just feels very lightweight. Like you come out of it, and you honestly can't really remember anything about it. And I, I just think they had an opportunity here as well to go really dark, you know, and, and, and do a proper... You know, we've got all these light universes. Everyone's trying to create these movie universes now. You know, you had Marvel kind of really kick-starting it all. And some of the problems that I know... Like, I love Justice League, but some of the problems I recognise is that they are trying to make it lighter so that they can be like Marvel. And that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Be your own thing. And this as well, you know, it's it's just too light. It's sold as a, you know, like, like the old universal horror movies, um, cause, which, quite frankly, were really the, the original shared universe. You know, you go back to the 1930s with Dracula and The Mummy and Frankenstein, and, and, and they had those films in which all those characters crossed over. It was a shared universe. And they're, they're, they're basically trying to bring that back. Universal want to bring that back. They've called this the dark universe. But it's not dark, you know? There's, there's too much humour in there. And it just doesn't feel heavy enough. Um, so it's a real missed opportunity. And for me, that's why it, it kind of makes my bottom five. Because, yeah, it, it just feels a bit lightweight a bit too kind of marketed at a, maybe a younger audience when this really should have been the shared universe that was marketed at an older audience. At number four, we've got Underworld Blood Wars. Uh, this is a film that actually, when I watched it the first time, I thought it was all right. I was quite entertained by it. Uh, a lot of action, uh, quite a lot of different villains in it that all have their own agendas, which I liked when I first watched it. I gotta say, I watched it a second time. Uh, <laughs> On, on digital and I, I was bored. I was just bored. It's nicely shot, I think. I yeah, you know, I still think the 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 main villain in it is, is quite interesting. Well a couple of the main villains actually still quite interesting. But it, I just, I was just bored, yeah. Um I, I, I there's just something about it that just it feels stale. Um and then you have this whole thing in there in, in which Celine kind of well, I won't ruin it for, for anyone who's not seen it, um, but they do something with her character and just don't explain it at all. You know, it's it's, it's like by now that they, they, they've just accepted that we, you know, we're going to leave it for the next movie. We don't need to wrap things up. We don't need to make a film self-contained and give you all the information that you need to understand the narrative. Because if we leave it out, we can give it you in the next movie. And that kind of mentality really annoys me. It, it just, it does my head in. Um, so I, I feel like the film is incomplete. I feel like the narrative they've told, the story they've told is incomplete. It doesn't quite make sense. And that's because information has been left out, no doubt, for a future movie. Number three is the rival franchise to this, although I think it's the same studio, so it's not really a rival franchise, but I know fans kind of have a this versus that about it. It's Resident Evil, the final chapter. Now, I actually think <laughs> this is a better film than, than Underworld Blood Wars from a narrative standpoint, from a story standpoint, a character standpoint, you know, the journey that the main character goes on, all that stuff. I actually think it's a better film. So why is it lower? Well, it's because I cannot see a bloody thing that is going on in this film. The way it has been shot is like someone who is, just, is on a complete acid trip throughout. Uh, you know, the, the camera never keeps still. It's always in really close. And for a film so laden with action, 
that is not a good thing good thing because you cannot see a damn thing that is going on throughout most of its running time and number two it's a film called a voice from the stone uh this is a film that quite frankly should have been comparable to a film like the others you know the nicole kidman starring film it's got a very similar kind of atmosphere very similar setting it was going well I must say, uh, the performances throughout are, are really good, very strong. Uh, I think it's it's well directed from a visual standpoint. I think the, the mood and the pace is, is pretty well done, although I think it will be very slow for a lot of people. Um, but you see this twist coming a mile off. And that isn't necessarily a problem. The problem is that you really shouldn't be able to see this twist coming a mile off because there is nothing in the film th that makes sense, that, ma that, that, that allows that twist to make sense. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sat there throughout it and I'm thinking, oh, I bet, I bet blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah turns out to be true. But once it is true, you look back over the course of the film and you think, but it shouldn't be true. Because actually, they contradict themselves and they put things in the movie that kind of makes you think that twist that you did kind of see coming shouldn't have come. It just, it doesn't logically make sense at all for me personally. Um, and, and, and yeah, you know, like I said, the film was probably a little bit too slow at times. Um, I'm, it's debatable as to whether, again, this could be um, like marketed as a, as a true horror it's, it's it's kind of marketed as a gothic horror you know you think of the old hammer horror stuff it fits very much in that vein it's not out and out horror you know there's a few jump scares um, and towards the end of the film particularly in like the last 10 minutes there's a few creepy moments but yeah i, I like i say if, if you're gonna if you're gonna build to a twist like that you need to make sure you, you've done your groundwork so that it actually makes sense. And so my number one choice, uh, for my money, the worst horror film of the year. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not the biggest horror guy. I've not seen every horror film out there. I kind of steer clear of a lot of these straight to DVD stuff. I tend to just watch the stuff that goes to cinema. Um, but yeah, the, uh, Rings. Rings is my number one. It's a, for me, it, it just wasn't scary, you know? Um, some horror films, they inject a lot of humour in, uh, so that kind of carries you along, so you're not too bothered if if there isn't that much scares in. Like, I think of, like, um, Happy Death Day, you know? That, that wasn't a film that was exactly filled with scares or gore or anything like that, but they, they kind of made you warm to the characters and they put a bit of humour in there, so that carried you along nicely enough this film doesn't even do that there are no moments of humor in it uh so if you know if you're gonna if you're gonna stay dark if you're gonna stay gritty and you're gonna rely on scares then you need to give us the scares and there just isn't any uh you know that first ring film uh the, the go verbinski one not the japanese one because actually I, I watched the japanese one after the american one which may be the problem and as a result i, I just didn't it didn't scare me at all, but that first American one, that was the first, that was the first one I saw in this whole franchise. Um, it, yeah, it really scared me. It got under my skin, and this doesn't. For me, that's my number one choice. But what about you? Do you agree with my choices, or do you disagree with them? How would you rank these five films that I've mentioned? Uh, yeah, please leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and until next time, cracking. It's not out and out gore fest or anything like that. Uh, I don't think you'll get too scared by it. There's a few jump, jump, jump in your seat moments, um, jump scares. <laughs>